Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Sending the reward of Umrah to your departed loved ones or those unable to undertake the journey themselves is a profound expression of love and devotion. At Pure Passage we specialize in performing Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased family members, ensuring they receive the sacred gift. We understand the challenges and impossibilities some face in embarking on this spiritual journey. Pure Passage is here to alleviate the physical and financial burdens, offering a professional and reliable service that takes care of every detail. Let us help you fulfill this obligation for your loved ones with utmost care and attention. Make it happen today, contact Pure Passage and secure this immense reward by performing Umrah on behalf of those close to your heart. Bi'ithni Allah. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, as already expected, as promised, today we're going to continue with the Andrew Tate interview on the Piers Morgan Uncensored show. Yesterday, Piers Morgan and Andrew Tate discussed the conversion of Andrew Tate to Islam. Today, they're going to continue their talk. However, today, they're going to talk about the Israeli occupation in Palestine. Again, you can think of Andrew Tate what you will. I personally am not a fan either. However, you cannot deny his reach. You cannot deny his popularity and therefore you cannot deny what he can potentially do for the spread of Islam. I heard it firsthand that many people accepted Islam due to Andrew Tate. Therefore, as Muslims, we shouldn't judge Andrew Tate on his past sins. We all have sinned and moreover, Allah has forgiven his sins. This is it. Who are we to judge then? This in the past, we should focus on the present moment. Now Andrew Tate is a Muslim, alhamdulillah, and now of course we can observe how he represents Islam. In the first part of this video, he did a phenomenal job. Therefore, I'm curious what he has to say about the Palestinian issue. Guys, before we start this video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I want to turn to the war between Israel and Hamas in, in Gaza. What is your view of this war? I think when you call it a war, you're doing a disservice to the people who are having their limbs blown off by some of the most advanced technical weaponry on the planet. It is a genocide and it is disgusting. And it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be- I'm very pleasantly surprised, I have to say, because the Tate brothers already issued a statement, if you will, a little talk between Tristan and Andrew Tate on the subject of the Israeli oppression in Palestine. However, in that video, they didn't really take a side. They were talking about the subject being complicated and therefore you could make a case for the Israeli side, you could make a case for the Palestinian side, so they did not take the Palestinian side in this regard. Therefore now, as I said, very pleasantly surprised, of course, to hear this. Andrew Tate is describing the situation the way that it is. It is not a war after all. What is a war? What classifies a war? Warriors fighting against each other. Two military groups fighting each other. The American army against the Russian army, for example. This would classify as a war. But how can you classify the situation in Palestine as a war? It is absolutely impossible. You look into the creation of the state of Israel, you will see that it was a legitimate settlement. That's what it is. There was no war to begin with. Settlers came into the region of Palestine and spread over the years. Now this area has been occupied for over 70 years. During those seven decades, people have been massacred. People have been oppressed. Children have been killed. I don't want to use all the emotional speech here, but this is Factual. You can look at the numbers and you will see how many Palestinians have been killed and how many Israelis have been killed in return. So this is not a war by any standard. Kudos to Andrew Tate for speaking the truth. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is waging genocide? The Israelis are genocide <laughs> what a the question. Palestinians and you know it as well as everybody else does. I don't know does. that. Well then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. Perhaps. What do you think of, of what Hamas did on October the 7th? Why are you starting the story in the middle? I Pierce? didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. 
I'm now asking I can't you specifically about Hamas. I cannot professionally answer that question without talking about the context that led up to October 7th. Well, nothing, to my mind, justifies what happened on October the 7th. Nothing. Nothing justifies nothing. what happened before October the 7th, Piers. Mm. This is the exact point. So you're talking to a man. I don't know what answer you expect from me, because mm. let's forget the fact that I'm a Muslim. You're talking to a man who is fighting oppression to the best of his ability because he believes that the people in charge of the world are enslaving us all to the point where I detriment my own life. I end up in a jail cell because I'm speaking against oppression. Then you're asking me what I would do if my family was you're blown not in a to jail. pieces. You're not in a jail. Hang you're on. asking you're me not... what I would do if another government Andrew, came along and blew my family to pieces? You weren't put in a jail cell because of any oppression. Absolutely I was. No, you weren't. Of course you I were was. put in jail cell because you've been accused of serious sexual crimes. I would crimes. not have been accused if I was not monumentally successful in speaking the truth. Let me ask you again. It's a simple question. Some people can answer it straight away, including pro-Palestinians people I've had on my program. <laughs> Many are very quick to say, Piers Morgan, the voice of reason. Organization. Oh. And that's a very interesting question, but wow. I think you're peddling asininities. Well, just answer the question. Can somebody do me a favor? Google asininities and find out if it's a I word. know what it means. If it's not, make sure it's added to Webster on Top G's orders. Okay. Just, are they a terror group? You're peddling asininities because I'll tell you why, Pierce. Let me answer the no, question. No, I'm not. Of course you it's are. It's a simple question. That's like me asking. I'll tell you why I asked. Because yeah, the question is absolutely asinine. Of course, why would you ask this question? You're asking the question with a motive. Of course, you want to label Andrew Tate as an extremist, as somebody that is a terror supporter. This is why you ask the question. It is not because you you are truly interested in finding out if Hamas are terrorists or not. This question is truly asinine. It is useless because what Andrew Tate is saying, and again, he's absolutely right here, of course, is what was the context. So how can you classify Hamas as terrorists if you had 70 years of oppression of the Palestinian people? And now, just to clarify this as well, I'm not saying that everything that Hamas does is absolutely phenomenal, absolutely fantastic, but as he mentioned, you have to understand the context here as well. If, for example, the Native Americans, after being oppressed, I'm speaking about the early days, would have gotten up and would have defeated the colonizers, this would have been normal. This would have been something that anybody could understand. This wouldn't have been labeled then as terrorism. This is the context. If you have a foreign entity in your country attacking your country, sure, then you can claim this is terrorism. However, this is Palestinian homeland. The real terrorist, per definition, is of course Israel. Israelis occupied Palestinian lands and bombarded them for seven decades straight. I don't want to repeat myself here, killing civilians on a daily basis almost. So now you're going to tell me that people, after being oppressed for seven decades, finally stand up to the oppressor and then you're going to label them terrorists. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, don't you understand? And yet again, in the same breath I can say, of course there are some atrocities happening committed by Hamas. No doubts about it. But you can understand the context, you can understand the frustration coming from the Palestinian people, and you can understand the response. To every action, there is a reaction. One plus one equals two. You're peddling asininities, because I'll tell you why, Pierce. Let me answer the no, question. No, I'm not. Of course you it's are. It's a simple question. That's like me asking. I'll tell you why I asked, because the UK, where you were born, prescribes Hamas as a terrorist. They also prescribe me as dangerous to children in schools. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, Pierce. You're not prescribed. I, I don't want to go into too much detail. You can Google this yourself. You can see how the British were involved directly in the creation of Israel. And now those people will call Hamas terrorists. I really value the UK's opinion. You're not if prescribed as that. If I would sit here and say, is stealing wrong? And you'd say yes, and I go, ah, but what if the person stealing is trying to feed their family and if they don't, their family are gonna die? Is it still wrong? You're trying to take a so very nuanced and complicated argument no. and reduce it down to no, one not. sentence, no, which not. is failure. You're trying to equate stealing with a mob of terrorists breaking over a border going to peaceful uh, debates. Really? Yeah, what? sure, exactly. He's not equating anything, you dumb idiot. He's simply giving you an example. That's basically what is going on. Of course, he just wants to use an example of something that could be considered immoral, such as stealing. No, nobody says that stealing and killing are equal on the immorality scale. It is just an example of something immoral. That is all. Wait a minute. A mob of Wait a minute. Over a Let me finish. And, and killing people. Is that going, what Israel did? Going through border on October the 7th, oh, October the 7th. massacring young people at a festival, 
massacring Where families are the in their homes and a kibbutz, Where are the setting pictures? fire to them, cutting Where their heads the off, killing babies. Oh, killing it was 40 the most babies, that was true. Well, fine. <laughs> Were the babies vaccinated? <laughs> Why are you being flippant? I'm not being flippant. The point I am making... I don't making, find that funny. No, but the point I'm making is that the media Yeah, you do, man. Don't Firstly. act like it. Secondly... I don't find that funny. Stop it already. Again, it's a fact. The claim was made that 40 babies got B. However, there was no proof of that whatsoever, despite the AI images, and ultimately they had to retract their statements. So those are lies. Those are fabrications. We're living in a day of social media. Man, just join some Telegram groups and you can see all the footage, all the atrocities that are being committed to the Palestinian people. Up until now, I swear, man, I've been on so many Telegram groups. I've seen so much atrocities. I've been traumatized for the rest of my life, probably. However, the only Israeli deaths that I saw was a couple of soldiers being shot from the distance. That's it. I haven't seen one dead Israeli civilian, not one of them. I haven't seen any child, any baby, not one of them. On the other hand, if you want to find Palestinian footage of children being massacred, you can find that on mass. Yes. There is a never-ending supply of videos of atrocities committed against the Palestinian people. Show me the evidence, man. Show me the videos of the Israelis. Show me the videos of those supposedly slaughtered, killed people at the festival. I haven't seen any footage whatsoever. I'll ask you about different things at the same time, right? Sure. So I'm asking you, first of all, specifically, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Sure. Yeah, I'll just tell me that night. Just tell I me do not night. condone the loss of human life on either side. Mm -hmm. I think anybody doing anything which directly damages civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. However, I would be an amateur if I could not sit and pretend I do not understand the motivations behind either side. This is not even me taking a side. I understand why Israel is doing what it's doing. I understand why Palestine is doing what it's doing. However, I still call the Israeli actions absolutely abhorrent and genocidal. Okay, we're going to come to Israel's actions, I promise you. We will ask that question specifically. But in terms of what Hamas did on October the 7th, do you accept that was an man. act of terror? We've got to defend Israel. It's an interesting yeah, question sure. because... Once it's not again, really. It is. It's no, a it very straightforward question. Because you're the person who would have called Nelson Mandela a terrorist while he was still in jail. And one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. I wouldn't for have me to answer that. the question, Yes, you would have. For, the, for me to answer the question, I have <laughs> to be have. very professional, Pierce. For me to sit on the outside in Romania with no personal involvement in Israel-Palestine, it's easy for me to say, yes, it was an act of terror. However, if I was in Gaza, if I was in open-air prison, if my family had been annihilated by bombs from mm. the sky, mm. if everybody I knew had suffered the loss of a loved one, if I had no chance of any kind of freedom or democracy or standard of life, would I believe it was an act of terror or would I believe it's an act of resistance against oppression? You have to be very careful how you answer these so questions. So what do you think? It's very interesting to hear the apathy in the voice of Piers Morgan. Andrew Tate is telling him about the bombing, about the genocide, etc, etc. But it just meets deaf ears, ultimately. He's sitting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't care because it does not support his narrative. However, if we're talking about kidnapped and killed ravers on a music techno dance festival, ooh, that is really, really important. Of course, such an atrocity. The worst atrocity since the don't you see? To me, it's very fascinating how hearts can just close up. You look at certain atrocities and you dehumanize those people. You don't see them as real. You're siding with the oppressor in this case, of course. And every single atrocity that's committed against the Israeli people, it is the worst, of course, the worst of evils, absolute hell on earth. However, if anything happens to the Palestinian people, you do not care, even though those atrocities are much larger, of course. I showed you the statistics over the years. One last thing I want to say about this segment here is that Andrew Tate mentioned that those people don't have democracy. Democracy is a false god. As Muslims, we do not need democracy. I think I understand what happens when you take people and put them in such an inhumane condition. So For anybody to sit and say that you're going to take people and put them in absolutely inhumane conditions uh -huh. and give them no standard of life uh -huh. and they're uh -huh. not allowed to ever fight back or they are But I can agree right. with you. Anyone who well, does that is an amateur. I can agree with you that the plight of the Palestinians for many decades has been absolutely shameful. So what did we think no. was going to happen, Pierce? Okay, no, good. nothing justifies no. what happened on October the 7th. So what are they nothing. supposed to do? Nothing. So what are they supposed to that do? That was an oh, act of medieval barbaric terrorism. Nothing justifies <laughs> Did they so, so again, he allegedly agrees that the treatment of the Palestinians is atrocious, but then nothing justifies the reaction. That doesn't make sense. This is incoherent, this is incongruent, this is just bunk. It is senseless, of course, to talk with 
this man. He has an agenda. He wants to tell you, yeah, well, the treatment of the Palestinians was really atrocious, but please do not do anything about it. Can't you just stay in your open air prison and wait for democracy to come to you, to free you, to liberate you, to give you more rights? Probably it is due to Palestinians not having a proper stance on LGBT rights. That is probably what it is. You have to become more of a Western humanitarian in order to receive our aid after all. You are just barbarians. This is what it is, right? Man, what are you talking about? Yet again, Israel is a mega power. They are being supported by America. They have a bunch of American money. Therefore, they have a bunch of sophisticated weaponry. And this is something that you are holding against the Palestinian people, that you're holding against Hamas. Hamas does not have that type of money. Therefore, they do not have that type of military. Therefore, they are attacking the way that they can attack. Again, action reaction. However, they are not equipped as the Israelis are. And now you're going to blame them for savagery. Oh, you don't have nuclear bombs, Hamas. You're an absolute pathetic hypocrite that is peddling an agenda. That's it. Suffer and your attempt to, medieval, your, did they suffer your attempt to try and equivocate. Did they suffer acts of medieval barbaric terrorism before that date? Yes. And it's unfortunately an eye for an eye in this world. Tell me, I'm not condoning. Give me, I'm being a professional and answering give to me you one why example. Give me one example of where Israel without any provocation, <laughs> went into, well, no, wait, a specific question, without went into provocation. Gaza and massacred 1,500 innocent people, cutting their heads off, taping and boasting about what they'd done back to their families yeah, in Israel, where is kidnapping the Holocaust Short survivors, bringing them, they wouldn't have, of course, done that in their case, kidnapping old grandmothers and bringing them back to Israel, kidnapping babies, kidnapping children. Sure. When has Israel actually gone in and done something of the scale of October the 7th? Ah, oh, that's so extremely annoying, man. So, okay, his question was, when did Israel ever enter Gaza and killed 1,500 people? First and foremost, we do not have any proof for that. But that being said, let's get back to the statistics one more time. Let's take the year 2014. So 2014, yes, Israel entered Gaza yet again and injured almost 20,000 people, of which at least a sixth died. So a sixth of 20,000, that is roughly 3,000 people dead. So there you have it, Piers. Those are the numbers. 2014, Israel enters Gaza kills over 3,000 people, injures roughly 20,000 people. Is this enough evidence for you? Probably not. There's literally endless examples of that. Give me one. In 2014, they were bombing civilians. Hey, no, no. What? Pierce, nice. let me tell you something. I'm not talking I'm about, no, no, I'm not no, talking no, about well, they were no. categorized as retaliation for rocket strikes. And there's an arguable point, as there is, for example, I'm vehemently against the expansion of the settlements on the West Bank. I think and now there are you are. questions about the proportionality. <laughs> as I was saying, this guy is a total hypocrite, of course. And now he's against the expansion of the occupation. Okay, when did that opposition start then for you, Piers? When were you against this expansion? 1946, this was Palestine. Then it continues, 1947, only 10 years later, the majority is already Israel. Then 1967, 20 years later, pretty much everything is Israel. And 2010, it looks like this. This Pierce is a genocide. This Pierce is a violent occupation. That's just what it is. You can see the numbers. You can see the expansion here. This is reality. Now you're going to tell us you are against the expansion. So what should they do now? Should they circle back? Against which part of the occupation are you? Are you for the two-state solution? What are you talking about? This is why it is hypocrisy, of course. You see here that their whole land has been stolen. Their whole land has been decimated. And now you're going to ask Andrew Tate if he opposes terrorism. Of what Hamas perpetrated on October the seventh, there is no October the seventh. No, October the seventh. No, 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 Israel no. Doing that uh, to the people of Gaza, the first and you have first. to accept that. No. If you don't what? accept that. Okay, so you have to accept that there is nothing the people of Israel have ever done to the people of Gaza. Nothing in comparison. Are you kidding me? We showed you the numbers. We showed you the maps. They took away all of their land 99% of their land is gone and now you're going to tell us that there is nothing the israelis ever did that you can compare to the seventh you're the either deluded or you're weasel. deliberately not uh, yeah, wanting sure, sure. to say the obvious <laughs> which is that was an act of terrorism because you're concerned about upsetting people in palestine is that is sure. that the case let me go British back to my first point when I said peddling voice of reason the, the reason golden standard of morality the heinous 
and to ignore all of the context and pretend that you do not understand why said situation happened. Is in, Nothing is justifies asinine. terrorism on that scale. Nothing. Is, is asinine. Uh -huh. No, it's why? not. It I'm is. Not, I'm, because let me it's tell not you. about justification, Let Pierce. me tell you why. Pierce, it's not about justification. Let me tell you, no, no. It's about understanding the realities let of me, the world. Let me tell you the reality of the world. Hamas came to power in 2005. Yeah. Hamas's initial founding charge made it clear that they are for the eradication of Israel. And on October the 7th, they proved what that means. Men. Duh, of course they would be for the eradication of Israel. Isn't that just understandable? Imagine yourself right now living in Britain and now you're going to have a forced immigration, which you do essentially. And now they're taking over your country, renaming your country slowly but surely, taking over pieces of your country, changing the demographic of your country, changing the culture of your country. And then ultimately, 40, 50, 60, 70 years later, after being oppressed in your own country, Country, being decimated, being bombarded, being slaughtered, your family members being killed, you actually decide, you know what, we want to get rid of this occupation, this new false state. We want to be Great Britain again. Would you then call your fellow Brits terrorists? Of course you wouldn't, you absolute hypocrite. Because they will wow. kill every Jew they can get Such their Such a hands snake. On. They are an existential threat to people in Israel and to Jews lived and peacefully that is, afraid, in Palestine. Nobody has an issue with them. The terror group. I also think by doing what they did, as they have done since 2005, they weren't representing innocent Palestinian people in Gaza. Who are suffering they, they knew, yes, but Hamas knew when they did what they did that Israel would respond the way they did and that thousands of innocent Palestinians would get killed. They knew that and they still did it. So my question for you is why can't you... Yeah, so let's just do nothing. Is, is let's just sit there what Stay Hamas out of the did window, was an act of terror. Look at Israeli missiles an bombing all families. Terror and should be called we'll exactly nothing. what it is. That's and right. they are now demonstrably a terrorist group. That is why they were rightly prescribed that by the UK and America oh, and other countries. Rightfully and done. To try and pretend you they're not terrorists. makes you sound like Just Jeremy like Osama bin Laden. I can't think of a worse insult to throw at you, right? So <laughs> I don't so, think me and Corey so, would agree on but that. But I also think there are legitimate questions to come about the way Israel's responded. We can come to that. But I just want to ask you one more time. Is what Hamas did on October the 7th. Why do you want to know this so much, man? Look yes. how pathetic this is. And this is why liberalism is a religion. I'm sure that Piers Morgan wouldn't even classify himself as a classical liberal. However, they all have the same talking points and they adhere to Western liberal post enlightenment values. That's just what it is. Hey, can you please say it now? Those are terrorists. Say it! It is a religion. You have to adhere to our dogmatic world view. The atrocities of this whole world war. It is exactly such and such number. You have to agree with every detail presented by our side of the history. If you don't, you're out of our team. We are all for open-minded thinking, don't you see? Free speech for everybody. Free speech, please repeat after me, Hamas terrorists. It wow. is peddling a cult. for you to pretend that enslaving people- so You sound people... like Jeremy Corbyn. Now. No, let me answer the question. 15 you times like he refused to like... answer the question. Let me answer the question. You're now up I'm to about, refusing. You're now if about you three or four. If you are they a terror group or not? They're one team's freedom fire and they're deemed a terrorist What do group. you think? I think that if you lock people in an open air prison and steal their land, they're going to retaliate. So they're not a terror group? I think they're going to retaliate. They're not a terror group? One team's terrorists is a Okay, we're now up to fire. about eight. Are Just say it, man. Who cares? <laughs> Honestly, people are way too scared about their reputation nowadays. Cancel him. Cancel him. Just say it already. No, I don't think Hamas is a terrorist group. Here, I did it for you, Andrew Tate. Up to about eight. Are they a terror group? And also, another thing I want to make clear to you, people. Only Jeremy Corbyn has done this. Done what? Refuse to answer the question. I think that what they are doing is seemly deemed an act of terror by the people that the terror... They use Weasley words. They're not Weasley. Of course the Israelis think they're a terror. I group. Actually of, agree. Course some, of course the Palestinians actually, think they're freedom fighters. Most of the people that you're asking the question... Most of the civilized world guess. thinks they're a you terror. You have all the money in the world, who guess? It's not difficult. What they did was an act of terrorism. And I think that if Israel continues to, uh, con to conduct to, acts of terrorism I'm going to on the Palestinian people, they're going to do nothing I'm but... Gonna I'm going to give you another I'm chance, Andrew. Come to our side. But before I get there, one more time... One last time, say it! ...terror group who committed an act of terrorism. <laughs> I think that when you lock people in an open air prison, you're going to have okay, to expect you're not gonna a answer. retaliation. You're not no, gonna because answer. I have to, there's people who are, firstly, first things I want to say to Peter. If you don't mind me saying, I think it's spineless. Sure. 
I do. That's fine. You sound like Jeremy Corbyn. Well, that, that is an Did insult. you see my interview with him? No. Right, 15 times last week. I actually I agree with him. Piers Morgan. Yet again, Piers Morgan is an absolute pathetic snake. Of course, he's peddling an agenda. But I have to agree, it is spineless. Andrew, just say it. You believe it is an open-air prison and Palestinians have been bombed for seven decades now. Therefore, again, action, reaction. That reaction in the light of those 70 years is a justified reaction in your worldview. This is what you try to say here. And therefore, you do not see Hamas as a terrorist group. That's it. In the same Just question. say it, man. Who 15 cares? times he prevaricated and wouldn't answer. Eventually, when someone does that enough times, you know what they really think. Okay. You don't think they're well, a terrorist group. Well, let me answer You don't think they're a terrorist group. No, what I think is this. On certain Because I'd be really curious what you think an act of terror is if it's not massacring 1,500 innocent people. It's not 15 million! Pierce. Kidnapping babies, Pierce. decapitating Pierce. people, cutting their limbs Pierce. off, Pierce. raping Pierce. women. Yeah, talk sure. about missing limbs. We're going to talk about that when we talk about what we are, done. But so when we get there, it'll be in the context of you not admitting. <laughs> and again, this is exactly what I said when he's talking about the Israeli casualties, the Israeli deaths, etc. He becomes all emotional and he wants you to see it the same way. Don't you see the babies, etc., etc., you name it. But when Andrew Tate speaks about the Palestinian children, he does not care. It is the hearts that are blind. Let me answer the question for the final time. I am a realist. And as a realist, sometimes you do not come to the conclusion of labeling good guys and bad guys. The world is not black and white. Oh, oh no, Hamas are no, bad guys. No. The world is not black and white. The world is actually very gray. Mm. Anybody who sits and thinks there's nothing clearly a good about guy, what, there's nothing there's gray about a good what Hamas guy did. and clearly a bad guy does not understand how the world works. And as a realist, what you do is you look at scenarios and you understand why they happen, how unfortunate they are, how unfortunate the loss of human life is, mm. how civilians die on both sides, how innocents are dying in a okay. chess game played by the elites on both sides. Okay. Both sides, you have sure. innocent people who didn't even vote for the person making the decisions, who are ensuring their death, signing their death warrants. It's unfortunate on both sides. Okay. But listen, sir, you would not advocate Russia doing any of the things to Ukraine that Israel is doing to to to, to Palestine. You would not Sorry, sit Russia here. Russia has been doing exactly that. Russia has Ukraine. not done a fraction Russia of the things illegally, to Ukraine Russia, that Israel has done Russia, to Palestine. Russia illegally not invaded just. a sovereign democratic country and has democracy. a democratic rampage we love trying our to seize democracy. as much of Ukraine as it can, bombing maternity hospitals, Let me ask killing you a question. innocent women Let me and ask children. You a question. Right? Don't even try and have some kind of... No, no, this is... Genuine don't even compare well, anything, rocket, anything. Rocket that can make a all right guys, we're gonna cut it off here the video is long enough as it is if you want to continue watching this interview you can find it on piers morgan's channel it is called andrew tate talks palestine and israel with piers morgan the latest interview part two but i'm gonna cut it off here i said basically everything i can say on the subject over here now use it against me and label me as a terrorist supporter of course guys if you enjoyed the video leave the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box to further support bobby's perspective and now as always may god bless you all much love and peace